Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me again. I'm very excited because today is April 15th, which means you and I get to start the 2024 garden. Now, our last frost date in this region of New York is not until mid-May, but we can still go ahead and plant out frost-hardy seedlings. And I'm going to show you the seedlings that I've started in the grow room. But first, I need to clean up my workstation and have an energizing breakfast. This is the granola that you and I made a few episodes ago. It's vacuum sealed. So I have some Greek yogurt. Now I can put a screw top lid on the jar. This granola is ridiculously delicious. I will put the recipe in the description below. Let's head over to the grow room. So this is the grow room. You and I built this metal shelving about six weeks ago and we installed these lights. Let me show you the seeds that have germinated. So we have sweet peas. And as you might recall, we first soaked the seeds and oh, they grew very quickly. It's definitely time to transplant these to the open garden. Here in the back, we have parsley, a lot of parsley. And then in front, we have cilantro, basil. We have Roma tomatoes in the back. We have purple zinnias. Now, the zinnias cannot be transplanted yet. It's, they are not frost tolerant. And then I had very poor germination on the purple Brussels sprouts. So I may need to supplement my Brussels sprouts with seedlings obtained from the local farm store. And on this shelf, we have bell peppers in the back and celery in the front. The celery is frost tolerant, but the seedlings are too small to transplant just yet. Here are the pelargoniums that you and I purchased locally. And as you can see, they are blooming like crazy. I have hardened off most of these seedlings by letting them spend long stretches out of doors. We are heading up to the kitchen garden. A kitchen garden is so-called not for its proximity to the kitchen, but for what is grown there. I fill my kitchen garden with vegetables for the kitchen, plus flowers for the soul. Before we can plant the sweet peas, I need to amend the soil with a balanced organic fertilizer. I can link this fertilizer below if you are interested. I should probably mention that sweet peas are not edible. They are grown for their exquisitely perfumed flowers that emerge on long, vining stems. To support the vines, I am growing them up a trellis. On to the potatoes. Eventually, I will fill this entire bed with potatoes. Today, we are planting just five Yukon Gold seed potatoes. Yukon Gold are determinate potatoes, meaning you do not have to hill them as they grow. I am planting the seed potatoes about six inches deep. New tubers will form in a single layer just above the seed potato. Mm -hmm. 
I am using a broken twig to indicate where in the bed I have already planted. In another bed in the kitchen garden, the garlic that you and I planted last autumn is growing with great exuberance. Also growing now is rhubarb and lovage. We will use some of this lovage a little later in this video. And here is the matador spinach and the romaine lettuce that you and I winter sowed outdoors in January. Every seed germinated and the seedlings are now ready for their permanent home. It feels great to have the sweet peas and the very first potatoes planted. Now I want to transplant the winter sown romaine lettuce and matador spinach. We will plant those in the little herb garden. The straw that you and I laid on top of the herb garden beds last fall has turned this soil into black gold. Have a look. The soil is very soft. Look at how rich the soil is. Oh, I'm going to plant the romaine lettuce here and it will be very happy indeed. Just gorgeous soil. The great thing about winter sown seedlings is that you do not have to be gentle with them. They are as tough as nails. You can rip the plants apart, tear their roots, and the plants will not be bothered in the least. And that's because these plants were born outside. They were not coddled under lights indoors. Romaine lettuce can take a frost, and that is an absolute plus at this time of the year. I created this tiny herb garden in the nook behind two wings of my house. It is my favorite place for outdoor entertaining. We host intimate cocktail parties and dinner parties here. We certainly are accomplishing a lot today, and I really appreciate your company. Let's head over to the local farm store to see what seedlings they have to offer. Before we head home, I want to grab paint and a paintbrush at a small local hardware store. If my energy holds up, I will paint the old cast iron urn that serves as a focal point in the herb garden. Our final stop is a local garden center. Here 
I hope to find a jardinere and a flowering plant that we can put in the herb garden. We are home again. This is what we purchased at the farm store. A four pack of leeks. Now there are many leeks in each cell here and I will buy more leeks later on. And I got two packs of Savoy cabbage and one six pack of premium crop broccoli. I'm not going to plant these right now because the urn at the center of this herb garden has been bugging me for years. It is in dire need of a paint job. So we are going to paint that today for a beautification project. I bought four of these ancient cast iron urns at auction several years ago. To prepare the urn for its makeover, I first use a wire brush to scratch off dirt and debris. I selected a charcoal gray paint for the urn and its pedestal. The paint is an oil-based enamel that's intended for cast iron. comments, let me know what you think about the color. I have no strong opinion on it. I'm not going to paint the top of this pedestal because when the urn is in place, no one will see this. And now I am getting hungry. So let's head up to the kitchen garden to harvest some of the young lovage leaves that we can turn into a salad. And then for dinner tonight, I think we can have one of the freezer meals that we made several weeks ago. Dinner tonight will come together very easily. In addition to the lovage salad, I will serve the maple barbecue freezer dinner that you and I made several weeks ago. Freezer dinners are very convenient after a long day in the garden. Here is our beautiful lovage, which I will turn into a salad in just a moment. First, I want to make the side dish that will accompany the maple barbecue chicken. So I'm going to make some rice. I have two cups or 470 mils of the vegetable stock that you and I made together quite a while ago. I put the stock in the freezer. This is minute rice that I'm making. So you use equal parts liquid and rice. First I have to bring this to a boil. I'm also serving broccoli with this dinner. Roasted broccoli florets. Olive oil. My oven has preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. Salt. Pepper. Toss. And here is the maple barbecue chicken that you and I made together in our freezer meals video. When was that? Six weeks ago or so, I think. So you make the marinade. Well, you put the chicken in a Ziploc bag and then you make a marinade, pour it right over the chicken, freeze it, and then 
The day before you wish to serve the chicken, take it out of the freezer, and as the chicken thaws, it marinates in the beautiful sauce. We can put the chicken and the broccoli in the oven now. It will take 20 to 25 minutes. And now our vegetable stock has come to a boil, so I'm going to add two cups of minute rice, and then I will turn the heat off, cover the pot, and the rice will be ready in about five minutes. I have washed the lovage. I'm going to lay it out on a towel. This is the easiest way to dry the leaves. Now, Lovage has a strong and, to me, very delightful celery flavor and scent. Lovage is very popular in Eastern Europe, but it's almost not even known in America. Lovage is the first edible green to emerge in my garden each spring. Truly, it starts growing usually when there's still some snow on the ground. So the lovage plant is perennial, comes back every year. And it can be a monster, it can grow to nine feet, but you can always just cut it all the way back to the ground in midsummer and it will grow again. You can keep it at a respectable size. Here's something neat that you can do with lovage stems. The stems are perfectly hollow, so you can use them as a drinking straw for a Bloody Mary. Well, that's what I sometimes do. I have some homemade blue cheese dressing that I'm going to add to the lovage leaves. In the meantime, while the chicken and the broccoli are cooking, let's head out to the herb garden. I want to move the urn back to its rightful position. My bad. The top of the pedestal that I thought would not be visible is indeed quite visible. We can fix this problem very quickly. I do not have the energy to dress for dinner tonight. I hope you will forgive me. So here's my beautiful blue cheese dressing. This is homemade, and the recipe is on my website, which I will link in the description below. And here is the rice that cooked in only five minutes. Just have to fluff it up with a fork. I love these mixing forks. I forgot that I have a garnish for the chicken. I'm going to add some of the scallion, or I guess it's called spring onion in certain areas of the country. I'm going to add it to the salad as well. So I will serve the chicken on a bed of rice. Some of the beautiful sauce that the chicken marinated in. The scallion garnish. Broccoli. Broccoli will be very crispy.
to the garden. I decided that we should start with the lovage salad. This is really delicious. I love that strong celery flavor. And of course, Lovage has a wonderful crunch to it. Now for the maple barbecue chicken. May I just tell you how grateful I am that we are back to daylight saving time. This is exquisite. It has a lovely sweetness to it, plus a savory smokiness. The chicken is perfectly tender. I really love this. I hope you will give this freezer dinner a try someday. Of course, I will put the recipe in the description below. Of course, the rice with the sauce is really wonderful too. We certainly checked a lot of projects off of our list today. Let's see. We planted sweet peas and potatoes. We shopped for frost tolerant vegetable seedlings, which I will plant tomorrow. We found this beautiful blue and white jardinere and this Martha Washington geranium. We painted the old cast iron urn that serves as a centerpiece for this herb garden. And we turned homegrown lovage into a beautiful salad and we made this beautiful freezer dinner. In the comments, let me know how your own spring is progressing. Also, let me know if you have ever tried Lovage. I think it's just wonderful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I can put a couple of my other videos at the end of this one that you can enjoy between now and my next upload. Until then, Please treat yourself very well, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye, friends.